So do you get in on these conspiracy theory power rankings that the players are doing? Have you heard about this? I have not heard about anything. <laughs> you have to explain. Kirk says they make the rookies give PowerPoints on conspiracy theories during the downtime. Interesting. No, I'm sorry. I wish I could. It sounds like you're missing out. I am definitely missing out. I'm missing out on all the fun. I'm, uh, my eyes are just in the playbook, installs, and practice. Sorry. <laughs> yep. That sounds, that sounds interesting, though. Yeah. When it comes to um, Pats came on yesterday and it seemed like intensity for your group really mounted a bit over the last couple of days, how are you feeling about where things are with this unit? Yeah, no, it's uh, anytime the pads come on, I mean, that's that's real football. Um, you know, the, the whole off season and the beginning of training camp, you know, I call it, you know, both both sides are in pajamas. I mean, this is this is, this is not what we really play football in. It's all about fundamentals, technique, uh, getting your eyes right, getting our keys right. Um, but yeah, once we get the pads on, we're still not going full to the ground, but now it starts to become a lot more real. And uh, usually early on, the defense has a little bit of heads, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, advantage, um, just because that's when our physicality starts to, to come alive a little bit. Really pleased with the way our guys use their hands, uh, fit up the run game, um, got the, as much pass rush as we could, but also staying away from our quarterback to keep him him healthy. Uh, but I really like where our guys are at right now. I've been really intrigued by. Obviously, we talked a lot about Kate and Nate and Troy and what you have at that inside linebacker position. Um, I'm kind of curious how you go about with the rotation, who has the green dot and who, who's calling the plays and how that operates. Because I, I know that I, I feel like they switch off a little bit. So correct me if I'm wrong on that. Oh, no, no. This is a, this is an excellent problem to have. Um, it's It's really nice when you have a, a lot of really good players um, and those three guys you mentioned are, are really uh, smart uh, they're physical and we're going to utilize those guys as much as we can on on all downs uh, there's gonna be times where all three could be on the grass there's gonna be times where maybe one or maybe two in a combination of all three um, love their versatility and it's gonna uh, give us a lot of things to do defensively to cause confusion for our opponent Raheem's talked a lot about role clarity with players just in general and kind of knowing what they're going to be, how they're going to serve the team. And on defense, there's been a lot of different kind of personnel that's been rotating in. Like yep. Corey was saying, like linebacker up front. Uh, is that kind of how you anticipate this, this defense being, just kind of throwing a lot of pieces at different teams? Yeah, <clears throat> for sure. And um, it's just all about building this thing where the guys understand it, but we can rotate a bunch of personnel groupings, different people, um, you know, on offense may see somebody as a known rusher they think is going to rush, and then all of a sudden that guy's going to drop. They might sit, think there's a guy that's probably going to drop back in coverage, and then he's going to rush. Um, and the more we can do that, uh, looks very, very complex to our opponent. Uh, but the way we install it and the way our coaching staff installs, uh, we can keep it very simple for us, but but hopefully cause a lot of headaches for our opponent. As you're thinking about, as you're thinking about your pass rush, in, in your mind, does it, does it come in buckets? Like I. I I think we're going to get this many from defensive linemen and this many from edge guys and this many out of the secondary, or does that develop as the season goes? Yeah, I would I would say um, kind of what you the last thing. It's going to develop as the season goes, but really for me, pass rush is, is all 11. It's all 11. Uh, we have to be able to play really tight coverage for that quarterback to hold it an extra tick uh, for the pass rush to hit home. But when we were rushing the passer, it may not just be the four down rushers. It may not just be the outside linebackers. This could be a corner. This could be a nickel. It could be Jesse Bates coming from 15 yards deep, rolling off the edge. Um, it's going to be all of our rushers. And then when those guys are rushing, whoever's dropping in coverage, we got to be able to make sure we're dropping in the right spots, covering up the right spots, cause some confusion for that quarterback, cause some confusion for pass protection. And, and that's how our pass rush uh, will really start to heat up. And it was really in camp, but just what have you thought about Tark Phillips and the camp he's been having so far? Yeah, you know, really started back in the offseason, uh, you know, way back. He, he had an excellent offseason, uh, came in, uh, was ready to learn outside and also learn inside. And I've seen a ton of growth from him uh, playing, playing nickel for us. Um, and he's also made a, a lot of big time plays outside for us as well. And um, he's on the right track. Uh, there's always room for improvement, but I really like where, where Clark is at right now. I want to say Marco mentioned uh, at the school on Saturday that, that you all have had a, a, I'm pretty sure he said you all haven't installed any three safety looks yet. And then last year, I was kind of a, a, a staple of what they ran here. It feels like you guys have maybe tried to, to, to push a little heavier up front. What's the value of maybe having a heavier front, you feel like? 
So yeah, we're we're going to continue to mix up uh, you know our personnel groupings and you know especially in the National Football League, you have to make sure guys know different positions and certain guys go down. If you're more heavy at uh, safety and some corners go down, then more safety is going to play and vice versa. And so, um, you know, we just really got to look at our personnel, you know, who eventually makes the team and how and what that looks like. Uh, and, but every single game is going to be different. Um, if we need to rely on guys up front, more guys up front, we'll play more guys up front. If we need to, if this is a big passing team and they want to throw the rock all over the, the football yard, then we might rely on more guys in the back end. How much more, when you guys start up joint practices, I believe next week, just how much more assessment can you get from that thing going against like you know the same guys every day? Well, so first, I mean, iron sharpens iron. We're going against our offense right now is is punching a lot of holes in our in our defense and and you know checking our run fits, checking uh, our pass fits. Um, you know, checking, hey, I, I think this, this pressure is going to work. Oh, oh, my gosh, they blocked it up. Maybe we've got to change it. And vice versa, I know our offense is also learning a lot of things as well. And so this is great work against, against our, our guys. But now, rolling into next week, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, our guys are probably already uh, tired of seeing each other across the line, hitting the same guy. And now we get to go um, uh, against a, a really good opponent in practice and a good setting where we're keeping everybody um, – you know, healthy, but at the same time, uh, we're, we're rolling, and it's going to be very, very competitive. Um, looking forward to that, but right now I'm looking forward to this next meeting coming up to clean up practice from today. But that, that's going to be a fun week next week. I'm going to ask you just about a couple players up front. Um, Eddie Goldman, a lot of people haven't really seen him play in a few years, so I'm just kind of curious as to what you've seen out of him. And Damone Harris seems like he's getting some runs with the with the ones. What you seen out of him? Yeah, yeah, two guys that uh, we're all very pleased with. Um, Eddie has uh, gotten to way better shape than when he first arrived here uh, back in the spring. Um, he's played, uh, you know, with Jay Rogers. Jay Rogers coached him years ago, and so a lot of the same techniques um, he's able to recall, um, and he's gotten his body into into a better playing shape now. And so, really, really pleased with Eddie and Damone. Yeah, he, he, we've noticed him as well. He's 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 played well. He's got a good pass rush for us. He's learning the defense, uh, the fundamentals that Jaquez uh, Smith is teaching him, and and, and Coach Hux. Uh, you can really start start to see all that uh, starting to come alive. So two guys that we're really pleased with. Sorry, how much weight would you say Eddie has lost since the OTA period? I'm sorry, I couldn't put a number on it. I, I just know he looks better and he's running around. He looks uh, um, in way more condition when he first arrived. Um, him and Zach Harrison kind of traded. Like he, he gave uh, Zach all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he, he's definitely in, uh, in better shape uh, than he was when he first arrived. What's your your confidence level with the guys on the edge, guys like Lorenzo and Katie, that they can be playmakers for you coming off the edge? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased with those guys. You know, it all it all starts with their fundamentals. And Jaquise and Coach Hux are doing a really good job of, keep, of teaching those guys uh, the fundamentals of our defense and um, the fundamentals of their techniques. And those guys are coming along. Um, they're understanding it. They're in the right spots. They're in the right the right space. They're they've made plays where we had to shut it down around the quarterback. Um, they're on the right track, but you know, we I'm not going to say anything that they're going to do. We're going to have to go do it, uh, and then when we go do it, then you guys will be able to to write about you know whether they've uh, arrived or not. You mentioned Clark earlier. It seems like Mike has worked more with the one so far. What motivated that? Um, nothing motivated that. I would just say you know Mike's a really good player for us. He's played really good football in his career. And uh, he's a guy that can do multiple things for us. He can play inside. He can play outside. Uh, he had a really good spring, and so he's earned the he's earned the right to have uh, to uh, to have more reps and, and play with those guys. The GoPro footage that the quarterbacks are, are shooting. How much value do you get out of that? Well, so that, you know, uh, none yet. So I haven't really played around with it yet. Uh, Raheem showed it in the team meeting a couple of times, and I didn't. Re I saw it on their helmets. Um, I figured it was something. I thought it was like a social media or something was going on. You know, I didn't. I didn't know. But then Ross showed it in a team meeting. It was really cool. Uh, you know, for him to see from a uh, you know a quarterback perspective, hear the calls, see the safety, see the corner, see the front, um, got me thinking. You know, maybe I want to put one of those on Jesse Bates. You know, so we can flip it the other way yeah. and as as a teaching tool. Uh, you know, for guys coming in, this is this is what you're seeing. You're seeing here's the formation. That here's the tip. This is how you got to make your calls, and then hearing Jesse make those calls, I think it's genius. Uh, but to answer your question shortly, I haven't put a lot of. I, I don't watch that side of it because it's more their verbiage, the offensive verbiage. Yeah, I, just, uh, I just wanted to look at your defense from a different angle. Which is, you know, yeah. Yeah.
but it's it's very interesting, very intriguing. Yeah. Like Richie Grant is getting more reps with the ones right now, but DeMarco, any reason for that? And what do you like about Richie right now? Yeah, no, no reason. Both those guys we like, Richie and DeMarco. Um, again, you know, everyone's got room for improvement. They're playing well. You know, they've gone back and forth, and you can expect those guys to, to continue to go back and forth. I think there's two good players that we that we really like. Um, and I think you'll just continue to see a rotation with those two. Um, Kevin, how has everything been going with the tight end group here thus far in training camp? It's been good. It's been good. Those guys are really meshing well together. You know, we have a lot of fun in the meeting room uh, while getting a lot of work done. So uh, we're, we're coming together, and you know, a lot of those guys are staying back there in the dorms. So, that, so I think that helps out a lot, too. Uh, but it's been good. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of stuff that we need to clean up. But thank God it's only day two of camp, so we'll be fine, or week two of camp. And uh, I had a, I listened to the tape because I was out of town, but uh, you were talking about Kyle and the 60-yard play in Buffalo and how you wanted them to play fast. Uh, how's that coming? I know it's early in camp and just two-day a pass. Yeah, <laughs> so ab- forth, but, uh, absolutely. How's that coming? It, it's been He's been intentful about it. I think mm-hmm. a lot of things that he's doing right now, he's doing with intent. Uh, so you can see the play speed uh, getting better. Now when he gets tired, that's when we need to lock in and mm-hmm. make sure we're focusing on the little details. Uh, but he's been playing faster, and that's a testament to him. Uh, it means a lot to him. He, he wants to have the year that he's expecting out of himself. So uh, that's why I'm here, to help him get there. And uh, Warner, how's he doing? And some of the other guys in your group, Fitzpatrick, Dwelly, you got a, got a pretty good group there. Maybe. Yeah, 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 very eclectic group. Uh, no, Chuck has been awesome. You know, he, he's very versatile. And, and the things that we can ask him to do, not just in the run game, but also in, in the passing game. You know, he's a guy that has proved that he's a reliable target. You know, when you throw the ball to him, he catches it. So uh, that's all we can ask out of him. You know, Fitz, you know, rough first couple of days, a couple drops that he wished that he had back. But you know, I, I tell him that that's not indicative of who he is as a player. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. You know, one thing that I challenged him in this offseason was uh, just playing on the line of scrimmage and being able to block people and mm-hmm. put your hands on people. And he's been doing that, mm-hmm. and he's been embracing it. So that, that's all I can ask out of him. You know, Ross Dwelly, you know, one thing about Ross is in a good way, sometimes when he's in there, you don't notice, mm-hmm. which means that he's just doing his job, and he's very sound and very fundamentally sound. So uh, those guys have been awesome. You know, even young Stogner, even mm-hmm. the, the few reps that he's gotten, uh, he's brought a good energy, and I told the guys in the group he's the best finisher in the room. So he set the, the bar high in terms of the way that you, you should play without the football. Um, but those guys, are they're, they're doing well. They're playing hard, and that's all I can ask out of them. With Kyle, uh, I think Algier mentioned yesterday you can see an inch in him. Um, how, how do you maybe see that each day? Just his intentfulness in terms of, like, he's, he's texting me at night. He's, he's wanting to go over stuff one-on-one. He wants to come in early, 7 a.m. He wants to go over the script plays that we may not have hit the day before. So he he's reaching out to me to get extra work in, which is encouraging. They mentioned a lot of trying to improve uh, blocking with him. Uh, you know, I know you weren't here, but from what you've seen of him watching him from last year mm-hmm. to where he's at now early, how can you maybe see the strides he's made there as a blocker? Yeah, I, I know this has come up a lot, but I, I think it's, a lot of it is just him, like, being healthy and feeling good with that knee. You know, you can see the twitch and the explosion as he comes off the football. And a lot of it from our position at blocking, a lot of it is want to and will, and he has that, and he has the long lever, so he'll be just fine. You know, a lot of it too is just technique and putting him in positions that he may not have been in in the past and just getting better at that. But he has the the want to and the will, so he'll be just fine. Are you, are you seeing that pep in his step a little bit more now as opposed to like watching him on tape from last season? <clears throat> Um, probably, you know, it, it's, it's hard watching from afar. Yeah. So it's hard for me to judge like what they were, what he was doing last year, like what I see on film, because the film tells you one thing, then when you're there in yeah. person, like you see and you feel another thing. That's why I tell the guys, like, I see things, you guys feel things. You guys are out there, you guys are running around. So it's a lot different when you're out there on the field with the guy. So I can just only comment on that. Um, yeah, but he's been running around. He's been doing everything I asked him to do. So. Is it more of a reprogramming? With the tight end, since, especially with Pitts, since he wants to be there, you he wasn't here last year, and this is a new offense. Yeah, I think every anytime you have a new offense, it's always reprogramming. So there's always things, even if there is carryover, um, there's things that we want to do differently than the way that they did it last year, and it may be a very similar play. So it's, a lot of it is just like, hey, it always there's always some reprogramming going on uh, when you do have a new offense. So just working through those things, even though hey, this is the same exact word, but it means something totally different. So just getting that in his brain, and we're putting a lot on his plate. 
playing a couple different positions and run game, pass game, pass protection. And at tight end, you have to be able to do it all. So you, you can't be just a guy that just does one thing. Um, and he's he's taking ownership over that. Dwelly had quite the day today. What did you see out of him? <laughs> Ross, I'm mean, Ross is just, he's reliable. He's reliable. He, he knows his job, and he's a guy that can play multiple positions wherever he needs to fill in. Uh, he does it with a smile on his face. You know, Chuck, he, he came in when Ross got signed. He mentioned that Ross had one of the better hands on the team, and he, he put it on display the last couple of days. So, no, it, it was good to see him out there. And one thing about Ross, like, he, he like you, can, you can just depend on him a lot. So I think you're finally starting to see that uh, out there on the open field. When we see Kyle, he's, you know, quiet. But the word is that he's more vocal than, again, what we see from him out here. Mm -hmm. What is he like in your room? Personality. Yeah. Like he, he, he's, he's Mr. Personality. He likes to have a good time. I think we all like to have a good time. And uh, I think we all enjoy each other's company. You know, you can hear Kyle coming before you see him uh, just because he has the music playing. And he has a very interesting uh, taste in music, which is good. good. Good vibe for the room. And But you can see him. You can hear him before you see him. Uh, but he's Mr. Personality. He likes to crack jokes, so uh, I got to make sure that uh, I have some some fuel for him when he does decide to bring it my way. What's so. his music taste? You have to ask him. Okay. <laughs> you, you have to ask him. I'm, I'm sure he'll enjoy telling you better than I can. So, okay. so like, yeah. how does the how do you hear the music? Is he playing it on his phone? Does he have like a speaker with him? Yeah, it's just on his phone. Okay. It's just on his so phone. So he's just walking around with music all the time. I don't know about all the time, but I know whenever we're meeting one on one and he's walking down the hallway, I'm like, oh, here comes Kyle. So, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Coach, uh, Zach got the question yesterday uh, where he noticed that Kyle had been doing a lot of working out with the receiver group as well, and he said that the other tight ends are working out with the receivers as well, kind of back and forth. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Just just in terms of our personnel grouping, like, hey, when you are that second tight end in there, when you are the guy off the ball, no matter if it's Kyle or if it's Fitz or if it's Ross, like, those guys are going to have to do some of the things that we ask the wide receivers to do. So, um so yeah, he's just not the only guy. It's like, hey, Fitz, we need you to run a double move just like we asked uh, Kyle to run a double move. That's why I tell the guys in the room, like, the expectations for the position. It's not just like, hey, I expect something different out of him versus, it's like, the expectation for this play is whatever the play calls for. So no matter if we're in one personnel grouping and it's a receiver, no matter if we're in another one as a tight end, like, hey, the expectation is that we execute it just like the wide receiver does. So it's like, you probably see Kyle in that position more, but if, if Fitz is in there, Ross, whoever's in there, it, they're expected to get the job done just like the receiver would. So I know it's like super early in camp, but it looks like right now that Kirk and Kyle have like a good connection. Have you noticed that? And maybe like just because they've been working off the side with each other, what have you noticed? About yeah, uh, Kirk's like having another coach on the field. He he really is, especially during those special teams periods. He brings those guys over there and they get on the same page about a lot of things. So it's been good to get Kyle a lot of balls early in camp. Um, but I tell him, I'm like, man, your your success this year isn't going to be measured like off the metrics. Like like we. Like what we expect out of you, what, like what you expect out of yourself. If you do those things, then the stats will come. The stats will come. So it's been nice to see um, him get some love early on in camp. But there's still a long way to go with the entire group. Like there's there's things today that that we did that that can't happen. Uh, yesterday we dropped a couple uh, touchdowns in the red zone. Like that stuff like that can't happen. Uh, so again, once we clean up some of those stuff, some of those things, <laughs> still a nice hat. Uh, we'll be where we need to be. I'm um, kind of following up on that, obviously, coach the tight ends, but what have you just seen from Clark Phillips? Like, it looks like he's been having a, a good game, kind of being a pain in the butt for you guys. Yeah, Clark, he's competitive, man. He, he's really competitive, and he sees it really well back there, and he breaks on balls, and he makes it tough on us. He makes it tough, so I – like it's, it's just iron sharpening iron um, and it's a good matchup for us. I tell guys like, hey, we're not going to see much better than what we're seeing in practice. So um, if, if we can have success out here on the field, then that'll be good for us. My apologies. Yeah, good, man. Last year, Atlanta led the league in running 12 personnel. L.A. led it in running 11. Zach told me he plans on running more 11 last year than what we saw here last year. Mm -hmm. For me, when I first heard that, my thought with Kyle is that means he'll play in line more. Is that accurate? Um, I, I think uh, Zach mentioned earlier, like, yeah, Kyle's going to have to play in line more. You know, he, he plays tight end, and the things that we're asking the tight ends to do, he's going to have to do it. You know, walking on the line of scrimmage and pass protection, uh, whether it is 11 or 12 personnel, no matter what it is. So, yeah, you'll, you'll see him in line, putting his hands on people, uh, putting his face in the fan, because that's, that's what the job calls for. You have a feel for how much 12 versus 11 you will end up running? Oh, I, I couldn't put a number on it. I couldn't put a number, but you know, when you have guys in the room uh, like Charlie, like like Kyle, that can go in there and do different things, and uh, it's hard to put a number on it. But it should be fun uh, as we work through it together.
I've yeah. kind of lamented being around all those Georgia <laughs> boys in the room. I'm just curious, like, what the vibe is like with all of them? Uh, I just constantly remind them that uh, uh, University of Michigan won the national championship <laughs> yeah. last year. So all that SEC talk it can be out of the window. Uh, but, yeah, there, there, there's a couple Georgia boys in there. Um, but it's all about the Big Ten over here. I'm not trying to hear any of that. And they, like, kind of played with each other. At least Charlie is kind of that, like, connection that He's played. A, yeah. yeah. And then they obviously played in San Francisco. Like, I know we talked about that shared history, but how have you seen it kind of translate more on as during training camp? Yeah, it's been awesome just because, like, like Chuck is such a good leader. Like, he can, he can go in different rooms and relate to people really well. So it's cool for him to be able to – a guy like Ross, who he's really close with, who we play with, he was in his wedding. That's really cool. And then you have him being able to connect with Fitz, you know, those guys playing together at Georgia. Uh, but yeah, Chuck is kind of like the connection piece. Like he's like low key Mr. Personality. You know, he, he gravitates toward different groups. Um, and guys like him. It means a lot. It's when I, I played with Fitz when I was a junior, senior in college. So it's fun to reunite with him and spent the last four years in San Francisco with Welly. So it's a lot of fun to have a lot of camaraderie and. Uh, just friendships already coming into a new team. Yeah, is that does that feel different than any other room you've been in? Like just having that that shared history together. I would say so. I mean, I know rookie year you're coming into a team or a team tied in room where you don't know a soul, so that was a little more intimidating. But uh, the Niners were great. I, I uh, grew in quick with those guys. But here it's just even easier when you got two guys that you've known for a long time, and you just instantly walk in. You start meeting everyone else too, but kind of got your guys to lean on them too. Does that create like a shorthand at all, like within just communication or anything like that? What do you mean shorthand? Like just being able to, because you guys know each other so well, being able to, I don't know, maybe. Like work through things quicker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 100%, especially on the field when it's, you know, especially, especially probably me and Dwelly too, because we've spent the last four years in the NFL together and if it's certain plays, hey, we're kind of using past history to, to explain how we're going to do this again, yeah. you know what I mean? I was talking to Kevin and I can't remember exactly what he said, but I think he said, Ross was either in your wedding or you were in his wedding. Yeah, right? I was in Dwelly's wedding. Okay, yep, yeah. Yep. That's nice. It was awesome. It was a beautiful wedding in Lake Tahoe. Yeah. Yeah. Super honored to be a part of it. Um, so for you personally, what is what have they kind of envisioned for you um, with Zach in this office? Yeah, I think uh, I think coming in here, I think Zach's wanting to try to implement some more 12 personnel, which is two tight ends, um, I believe, and try to – Try to incorporate some more run game, uh, especially strong side, outside zone with tight ends on the front side, um, and just bring some of the uh, some of the stuff that he's done probably in the past through the McVay tree, through the Shanahan tree. Um, yeah, I think just be able to utilize me in the run game. Is it nice to have that familiarity with like the Shanahan? Hundred percent. Yeah, getting here, it's definitely not hundred percent like carryover, but probably like seventy percent. You know, and a lot of the concepts and uh, stuff are the same. It's just the names are different, so it's just learning things a different way yeah, here and there. And how's it been just being back home? It's been a blessing to be back home. Be, you know, we, me, and I have, me and my wife live uh, pretty close by, and then I got family all around here, and it's been a blessing to be home. And just to be able to see my family every day this spring was a blessing, and then to see them, you know, during training camp. It's my first time my wife's ever been to a training camp. Practice mm -hmm. was yesterday, and my son, so it was awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. Do you have more time? Ross Dwelly had himself a day today. He did. A few big catches. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from him, not only in today, but his training camp in general? Yeah, nothing. You know, I, I was thinking about it today. Like He caught a couple good balls, and everyone's like, oh, okay. You know, And I'm like, nothing I ain't seen for the last four years out in uh, San Francisco. So Dwelly's a great football player. Um, always had really sure hands and a, just a great blocker, great player. And so it, it's not a surprise to see him go have a good training camp so far. And so I'm just excited for him and the day he had today. What kind of asset? To this offense specifically. I mean, he can be your he can be your Mister just do it do it all Mister Dependable. He's a great tight end, um, and man, just excited to hopefully see him get some opportunities this year. It's definitely a lot different from what I'm used to. Yeah. Kind of better than 115 though. Oh yeah. yeah, but I'm talking Seattle better than Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, humidity, all that good stuff. It's a dry heat in Arizona. Right? Dry heat's easy. <laughs> Bring this humidity in, I'm home. <laughs> Struggle. We good. So, you need him to move up. so where's your your head at uh, at this point in training camp? Right now, uh, just do my best to learn all of it and get it all right. Um, obviously, there's gonna be mistakes here and there, but that's what camp's for. Uh, but it's it's cool to be able to take tips and tricks from from the vets and learn everything I can from them while getting my reps too. So it's awesome. It seems like the the last couple of days you, you know you've been out there, you've been making some plays. Do you feel like you're really kind of finding your stride? Yeah, yeah. It's like that time in camp where like everything's starting to click a little bit more, and you can like play. Fast. 
faster, play with more confidence out there rather than just thinking. You can just know and just let it roll. You know? Raw mentioned. Awesome. Raw mentioned yesterday they had to kind of reel you in a little bit yeah. at the start. Um, yeah. As far as like learning and acclimating here, where do you feel like you're at in that process? Um, learning and acclimating. Um, I feel like I'm getting, I'm getting where I fit in. Uh, Easily, but uh, obviously, you know, as a young guy, I gotta learn the tempo, learn how the speed works in the game and practice. Um, and sometimes I just be rolling, and, and coach gotta reel it in a little bit, because I'm still getting used to, you know, jog throughs tempo, and there's walk through tempo, and there's practice tempo, and like college, it was either you're going, or you're not going. Yeah. So. How how challenging is that? Because I'm sure for you, it's like I want to go hit this guy, but I, I can't. Yeah. Um, it's obviously challenging because it, it, you know it's football. You just want to let it roll and, and hit and keep going at full speed. Um, so when you're slowed down, it's a lot harder to play because you're you know thinking about your speed rather than what you're supposed to do. But um, it's not too difficult. It's still fun, you know, getting out there and getting reps and doing it all. What do you expect from this team's pass rush as a unit? Greatness. Um, I say that with a lot of confidence. Um, just being in the position room and on the field with uh, all the guys, the D linemen, or our guys in my room. Um, just the confidence we have in our pass rush game right now. Um, you guys can see it when you're one on ones, indies, you know, even team team drills. So um, I'm really excited to see what we do on third down and every other down. What specifically gives you that confidence? Because um, because not many people who've watched the Falcons for yeah. the last ten years are confident. In yeah, the um, I just think <laughs> what I bring to the table and what the, all the guys on the team bring to the table that are already here and all the other new guys that came in. Um, we all sat down and we talked, and it's just like everybody's going to have this mindset of we're going and we're not going to be mercenaries. We're all going to rush as a unit. Because um, when you have all, you have four guys, five guys on, on the front rushing and doing whatever they want, right. everything will fall apart. The quarterback leaks out. So that's our, our goal is to just rush that as a unit, a unit and play together because that's when we're going to be successful. You said what? Rush. I'm sorry. You said what I bring to the table. In yeah. your words, what do you bring to the table? Um, I say it and I'll say it again, like constantly, um, effort and just relentless. You know, it'll be, I could be 10 reps in, gas, tired. I'm still going to get off the ball and do what I need to do and give 100%. Um, and whether that's in a pass rush or setting the edge or playing the run game, uh, I'm going to do whatever I can. What's been the vision of Jimmy Lake for you and in, in your conversations with him? What have you taken away that you're really impressed with? Um, right now, just like the mental aspect of the game. Um, obviously, I learned stuff from him in college where, you know, it helped me build my game now, today. But on this level, it's like just the mental preparation and, and being sharp on the field. Um, those are a lot of things I'm learning from him. Um, if I mess up or something, I look at him and I'll just be like, I know I had this, and I'm going to get it right, and I'll just lock it in because with him, it's just we got to know what we're doing. We all got to be on the same page. Is the system, is his system more complex with y'all this year at this level than what you're used to with him from Washington? I mean, no, no. I'm, they're basically the same. I'm, I want to say it's too complex, but it's definitely not easy. Um, right. It's, you know, it's the NFL, it's the league, but um, yeah, I, don't, I won't go into too much more, but it's great. It's great defense. But is it similar to what he was doing in college, or has he just added more volume? Um, because similar this is similar and different. I can't okay. really say it's completely similar, you know, because it's not, but yeah. Raheem is big on like role clarity and like having guys know exactly what is expected of them. What does that mean to you, and what would you say, like, you know, your, your main role is on this team? Yeah, right now, my main role is to just, you know, be the rookie, learn everything I can, um, and also give everything I can. I can settle for just being a rookie, but I can try to be great as much as possible. Um, and every single day I come in and I'm just like excited to learn because, you know, like I said, it's, it's a lot to learn at this level and it's a faster game. It's a lot to pick up. You know, so I was a little bit slower coming in because I'm trying to learn it all. But my role right now is to just do everything I can and give everything I can in pass rush especially. And do you like the idea of like guys having their like the fine roles and everyone kind of knowing exactly what's been Yeah, yeah, them? because then it like it, it brings the team aspect into it more, I think. Um, if everybody knows their role on the team, whether it's a leader, a, a follower, or a hype man, something like that, um, then we can all mesh on the same level a lot better. What have you learned already? In terms of? Your game and like areas of improvement. Um, just a lot of things. Like my get off could be a lot better, which I've been working on. My mental aspect of the game, you know, seeing backfield sets, seeing the formations, knowing what's coming. Um, which I was already, I already knew how to do that stuff. But in this level, it's there's a lot more pictures and a lot more stuff that can go on. So I'm learning that mentally a lot better. So. Has there been kind of a moment or a practice or whatever where you figured, hey, I think I can pull my yeah. own out here? Yeah. Um, yesterday, first day of pads. I mean. First day we came in, um, even without pads and walkthroughs, I felt confident. But um, we put the pads on yesterday, and you know, getting suited up, you're like, oh, it's first day of pads in the league. Uh, but once I got out there and I, we were hitting and moving around, I, I felt confident right, yeah. right off the bat. So, how did you find out you're gonna be going with the ones? Um, just got thrown out there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just, I don't like to 
mentally like drop myself or put myself on a lower level, um, I'm ready for whether they're gonna throw me with the ones, with the fours, you know, yeah. like no matter what, I'm gonna give it all. So. What was that a moment of like, hey, they they they're seeing? Yeah, yeah, it was a confidence booster for yeah. sure. I, I got out there and I was like, man, they really believe I can do this you know, uh -huh. and play to the level of this game and with these guys out here that are all the ones. So, um, just coming off the edge against Caleb and, and Jake is like, these dudes are like top notch tackles. Right. Um, so. It's, it's fun to go against them, and it's like iron sharpens iron, and I'm learning as much as I can from them as they're learning from me. You said you've been finding your rhythm. Are you surprised that it's come this early? Yeah, um, it kind of just, you know, hit all at once. When I'm, st I'm still learning, but um, probably the first day. I mean, we came in, and I was like, I was like, damn, this is this is really camp. Excuse my language. I was like, this is really camp. Uh, it's a lot different from college, but because I got to find my when I'm doing my own treatment, I got to fit in when I'm eating, when I'm taking care of my body. Um, it's not really like you got the resources to do it, but not, people aren't doing it for you. So at this level, you got to be able to create your routine so I can play to the best of my ability. Do you think that's been the biggest learning curve for you? It has been, yeah. Um, I'm still learning, obviously, but I take notes from, from the older guys. I'm like watching how they get treatment, watching how they're in there studying film and stuff, um, and just copying them word for word. Yeah. So. Was today like a fire drill with the earlier practice? What was that? Was today like a fire drill with the earlier practice last second? Fire drill? Like, oh, altering, yeah, yeah, yeah. altering your plans? Yeah, it was. It, Got it in a rhythm, in, and now it's like, just kidding. Yeah, it came in, <laughs> lights were out, and we're like, okay, practice at 8.15. And in my head, I'm like, okay, this is a lot different, but I just wanted to lock in. And I was like, okay, time to go, time to flip the switch. Um, lights came back on, and everybody was like, normal day again. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do you all share, uh, I guess, advice with each other as far as the defense and offensive line? Do we share what? Advice or give up tips with each other? I mean, you know, somebody asks, but not. Not usually. Usually, we we mostly just talk to our respective coaches, and you know they're pretty good about going over the film and analyzing, and you know making suggestions, coaching, doing their thing. So, but if somebody asks, then yeah, like nobody nobody certainly tries to um, <clears throat> subvert anyone here. Anything else? I understand the helmet you're wearing. I guess has been approved, it, so you don't have to wear the, the cap. And yeah. How you came to that decision, and how you feel like it's going so far? Ah, right, good. It's nice. Not. Looking like I have a mushroom on top of my head. <laughs> I, I, I like that. Uh, it's comfortable, you know. It, I like it so far. It's lighter than having the helmet with the uh, guardian cap on, so. And that, I guess that was mainly it. Like, you didn't, you didn't want an helmet, so you wouldn't have to wear the... I did, yeah. And, I mean, it said it tested better, so why not go with an improved protective structure you know, if it really works better, you know. And then with the O-line, when, when you all see Kirk run, is it... More encouraging, or is it one of those like, all right, Kirk, we don't need you to run, we don't need you to hurt right now? I mean, it's never ideal if your quarterback has to run, you know, regardless of circumstance. You'd rather see that bad boy get completed for like 30 yards downfield. But, I mean, you know, I, I'm happy he's willing to run. I prefer him not to need to, though. Even, uh, Falcons have invested in a few uh, new young uh, offensive linemen. How do you feel about the, uh, the process for those guys and then kind of meshing into the overall group? Good. I mean, it takes time. You know, they're coming into a new system. Uh, we do things a little differently in terms of like stance and, you know, stuff like that, small things. And it just takes time. You know, learning the plays, especially learning a whole new playbook, is a nightmare for anybody. Uh, and that's one of, the thing that, one of the things that LED does a good job of is trying to break stuff down and make it simple enough that you can memorize it and then begin to expand on it later. Uh, so I, I think it's going good. It's just going to take time. With the run game, uh, Zach said it's it's like heavy wide zone still, but there may be a few new things he's added in. Um, for you all up front, is there anything that you feel like is like new schematically there, run blocking? I mean, it's hard to say yes or no because there's always new stuff, but everybody in the NFL kind of runs the same stuff. They're just different versions of each other, if we're being perfectly honest. So yes and no. That's a boring answer, but. What sort of progress have you seen, Matthew? Uh, I mean, a ton. I've seen him. He's matured a bunch. He's uh, a great player. I mean, he was a good player last year, but I think he's he's really really improving and he's growing uh, personally and you know as a player and teammate. When you say mature, like what kind of things? Well, just he's he's young. Like every rookie, every rookie in the world uh, is young when they get here. You know, be that you know young in terms of years in the NFL. Emotionally, like they haven't been in the NFL yet, and the NFL is a very different world than college, so it t it takes time. You have to learn the ropes.
Caleb, what do you make of uh, Charlie Warner, his double teaming that you had on the edge and in the run game? Uh, is there anything that's been you've noticed about him that uh, sticks out? I f love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it, man. Let me tell you. I dig it. I like Charlie a lot. I like all of our tight ends a lot. I'm very happy about our tight end room this year. I think everybody from KP right all the way over to Charlie and everyone in between. I think, I think they have a really good room, and I think it's going to be awesome this year.